Adolf Hitler die in a bunker under Berlin at the end of the Second World War? Or did he escape to Argentina with his wife, Eva Braun, where they lived out the rest of their lives in the foothills of Patagonia? It sounds like an unlikely story, but is it true? There is probably more evidence to say that Hitler survived and escaped and ended up in the South America than there is to say he actually died in the bunker. The silver bullet that leaves this debate wide open is the fact that nobody has ever been discovered. The testimony and the evidence for Hitler's death is absolutely compelling. It was never on the cards that he wanted to survive and he wanted to live. There are definitely questions as to whether Hitler died in the bunker. All that was really found was part of a job. So the question remains, did Hitler really commit suicide or did he escape? I think it's very plausible that Hitler survived. He did not commit suicide. I believe he escaped. Hitler did not die in the bunker in 1945. We've been lied to. And for whatever reason, it's worth continuing to this day. 70 years on, we're still being lied to about this. On the night of April the 27th, 1945, in Berlin, fires raged out of control as the intense and savage Russian artillery bombardment crept closer to the center of the Third Reich. Deep in his bunker, the man who had brought such destruction to his country and indeed the world knew that the war was over. The Fuhrer's options were limited. He could allow himself to be captured by the advancing Russians, but the humiliation was unthinkable. He could kill himself, but who could possibly replace him? Or he could try and escape and live to fight another day. Many people believe that he survived. The reason being that, that no body was ever found. And so basically that left the door wide open for all of the conspiracy theories. If Hitler survived, yes, it's perfectly possible he, he may have fled to Argentina. But he would have had to have stayed hidden for a number of years in order to achieve that. I think that therefore in the immediate aftermath of the war, I think he probably would have tried to escape either to the Alps, um, and in which case he may have had a good chance of getting down perhaps to the Middle East. I think this is a man who is extremely determined, and he would have had an exit strategy before he even began. He wouldn't have been in Berlin if he didn't know how he could get out. The Russians themselves thought he escaped, uh, and they're the ones who, who ended up trying to identify the bodies. There's witnesses that said, we helped him escape. There's pilots that went, well, I flew him out of there. Um, and it's all been ignored because the agreed story is the story that everyone wants to believe. We want to know the war stopped, he died, that was it. According to a new book, Grey Wolf, The Escape of Adolf Hitler, Hitler his wife, Eva Braun, and a handful of close aides and top-ranking Nazis did escape using a network of secret tunnels from the Führer bunker in Berlin. Its author is Gerard Williams, a former reporter for the Reuters news agency, and he agreed to meet me in Paris. So, uh, Gerard, did Adolf Hitler die in his bunker in Berlin in 1945, or did he survive? There's no forensic evidence whatsoever to suggest that Adolf Hitler or Eva Brown died in the bunker in Berlin in 1945. There is a huge amount of contemporaneous reporting to say that Adolf Hitler escaped and made it eventually to Argentina, where he lived, according to our research, until 1962. Um, people often think that that's complete idiocy, conspiracy theory, whatever. Um, I've been a journalist a very long time, Jamie, and I went back to look at the contemporaneous reporting from organizations like the BBC, the Associated Press, Reuters, all of whom at the time quote Stalin as saying that Hitler has escaped to Spain or Argentina. Um, Time magazine has detailed accounts of the bunker, the escape route from the Reich Chancellery, from Hitler's private quarters in the Reich Chancellery. This is published in Time. Newsweek carry details of how it could have happened. And then in 1947, in a Polish court, Captain Peter Baumgart of the secretive KG 200 Luftwaffe Group describes how he flew him out um, from a temporary airfield on the Hockensollenbahn, which is a huge boulevard in Berlin. According to Williams, everything was planned down to the very last detail. 
including even the clothes worn by the body doubles that would eventually pass themselves off as Hitler and Eva's corpses. As the clock struck midnight, Hitler turned to an orderly and nodded. Around about 20 minutes later, a small group emerged from a dark tunnel onto the streets of Berlin above. So, if they didn't die in the bunker, what happened to them? I, I don't make things up, so I'll tell you where the information comes from. Um, Major Nicotine of the NKVD, um, which is the uh, Soviet secret police at the time, who's tasked with finding out what's happened to Adolf Hitler, is quoted extensively in Time magazine at the time, saying that there was an escape tunnel from the Reich Chancellery, from Hitler's private quarters. It was hidden behind a concrete panel, which slid back to expose a, um, a series of steps down to another bunker. And from that bunker, there were another series of steps down to the underground train network in Berlin, U-Bahn. So they, they escape to another bunker, they then, from that bunker, find their way into the underground network. And uh, how far would they then have to have travelled to it's, then...? It's not terribly far, 10, 15 kilometres, depending on which way they go, when they then can then come up out of the underground, via an underground station, onto what is a temporary runway, um, of which we have seen um, RAF aerial pictures at the time. This piece of the road has been cleared, and a JU-52 is a short takeoff and landing plane, so it's able to get off pretty quickly from the ground. You know, the third Reich was really quite switched on to the reality of the situation and they saw that Russia encroaching on Berlin did not bode well for them. Uh, so again, preservation is their motivation and so is a fourth Reich and that's what they would have planned. And it wasn't just Hitler who disappeared unaccounted for. Other senior officials do as well, which tells you that they're planning a return. They're not done just yet. According to Williams, dodging fires and explosions, the small party made its way to the vast Hohenzollern Dam that ran through the center of Berlin. Once a fashionable boulevard, it was now a makeshift runway. And on it sat a Junkers 52 transport aircraft. Its engines being gunned by Captain Peter Baumgart, an experienced Luftwaffe pilot. Hitler and his companions had almost escaped the iron grip of Russia's military assault. But aren't the Russians bombarding the, the city? The Russians bombarding part of the city. You have to remember, this is a ground offensive. Um, they're taking houses building by building. Berlin is not a small city. And it's also, you know, there are various rivers running through it and all the rest of it. Um, large areas of good concrete that have to be cleared hand to hand. And it's also being held by some of the most fanatical SS troops in the whole war. Perhaps the weak link here is that there was a plane waiting for him in Berlin that took him to the airport that allowed him to leave um, Germany. And I say that because there's hundreds of thousands of Russians descending on the city. Would you risk being shot down and not even being able to, to lift off in the first place? Wouldn't you have a slightly different exit strategy for the first one? The whole of Berlin is a no-fly zone. The Russians wouldn't allow planes to fly. Uh, it's pretty much it's pretty much a no-fly zone, um, except there isn't that much air cover. You know what air cover there is? The Stormoviks, which are the uh, Russian ground attack aircraft, coming in trying to take out strong points. There's, there's no sort of there's no radar for a start, so you know you don't know where anything is. Um, the whole of German airspace leaks like a sieve. We're not running combat patrols over every single level of German airspace at that time. Our, our pilots are shattered. So are the Americans. We're all shattered by the state. It's very easy to fly an aircraft out of Germany at the end of 1945. There were several plans of escape. Uh, one of the most famous ones is that the Nazis would come down through Italy, escape from Italy, head across sometimes through Spain or the Canary Islands and on to South America. Um, Another plan was, and you saw a lot of action going on with aeroplanes landing near the building and the bunker and taking people out. Um, one pilot even testified saying he flew Hitler to and Everborn in a very small aeroplane to Denmark onto a submarine and to, uh, down to South America. It actually was the pilot who admitted to flying out Hitler and Eva Braun, as well as some other top generals. And this was publicized in the press, but yet it didn't stick. No one paid attention to it. There must have been plans in place um, to remove the Fuhrer from the bunker. And Martin Bormann, legend has it, took them out, um, flew them somewhere, 
put them in a submarine, sent them to, to um, Argentina, to the South Pole, um, somewhere. Having taken off, Hitler was leaving behind his beloved Germany and heading to a new life. But where exactly was Baumgart taking them? Well, according to Williams' research, that destination was Argentina. So, the plane's taken off, uh, it's left Berlin, where's it headed? It heads first to the Luftwaffe base at Magdeburg. It stops there, I'm not sure why, maybe to refuel, Baumgart doesn't go into details. And from there it flies to Tonda in Denmark. Um, where Hitler is seen to leave the plane by an SS officer on the ground, as well as Captain Baumgart's personal testimony. He hands Baumgart a cheque, I think, for 20,000 Reichsmarks, um, which isn't worth the paper it's written on, but it's a nice thank you, I suppose. And then they are flown in another Ju 52 we believe, onto Travemunde. It's quite detailed, this flight plan. What evidence, though, is there that they were flown from uh, Berlin to Denmark? The evidence is the um, evidence given by Captain Peter Baumgart at his trial in Warsaw in 1947. He said that he'd flown Hitler and his party out. Uh, he explained the route that he had taken. Um, and we also have another SS officer on the ground at Tondo, wounded, who describes the party arriving and Hitler addressing the wounded soldiers on the ground at the time. We also have Hans Bauer, Hitler's um, personal pilot, talking about being at Travemunde and making ready things for the final escape. Bauer doesn't go into details in his, um, his autobiography, but he does say he was asked to go with them, and he refused because he wanted to stay with his men. But there's obviously a group of senior Nazis leaving from Travemunde. What's really fascinating is the pilot, who is on record after the war, of having said that he wasn't part of this SS, he was just the pilot. His job was only to take Hitler, Eva Braun, and a couple of officials out of Germany to Denmark. So why would you make that up? Well, I mean, one of the so-called bits of evidence you know, put out by the authors of this book is that um, there was a pilot called Baumgart who, who had flown Hitler out. Um, and there's just a sort of scrap of uh, a news story upon which an entire case is rested. Now, Baumgart, as, as, as this news story even says, uh, or a further news story says, you know, was, was needed a psychiatric evaluation. So, clearly the man was a fantasist. So, no, I think the Baumgart thing you know, is, 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 is in by no means compelling and can by no means considered evidence by anybody sensible. If Williams is correct, and Baumgart did fly Hitler out of Berlin, then their route to Argentina was by no means direct. After landing in Denmark, he flew to Spain, where General Franco supplied him with an aircraft to take him to the Canary Islands. From there, the Fuhrer took a submarine to the Argentine coast, where he disembarked some 300 miles south of Buenos Aires. Stalin had said that Hitler had escaped to Spain or Argentina. We know that on Fuerteventura, in the Canary Islands, there was a major Nazi intelligence base run by Gustav Winter. It's called Villa Winter. We believe that three submarines are then tasked from the last submarine operation of World War II, which is known as Seawolf, which Speer and a number of other people have said are heading to the Atlantic coast of America, carrying V-1 weapons filled with chemicals and gas. They're going to take out New York. So the Americans take this seriously, and they move their whole naval blockade up to the North Atlantic, to get in the way of Seawolf. And most of the boats in Seawolf are destroyed. We believe that Hitler and Eva boarded one submarine. General Fagelin is on another submarine, which leads beforehand and gets to Argentina before them. And after 53 days of pretty much hell, they arrive off the coast of Argentina. The Americans and the Russians both thought that Hitler could well have survived. And there are FBI documents that have, have been leaked out or declassified now um, that state they were investigating that fact. They thought he arrived in one of two or three submarines on the coast of Argentina. And they think in the second uh, submarine, Hitler and Eva Braun got out and then were ferried away inland. Researchers have found correspondence to J. Edgar Hoover and from J. Edgar Hoover talking about the fact that Hitler may have gone to Argentina. It appeared as though he did in a U-boat and is living there in sort of a, a Nazi community of the Fourth Reich. But what's interesting is that there's no apparent action. It's almost as though they don't care or perhaps they already knew because they had struck a deal. And that is the most intriguing part of it all. There is a possibility that a deal could have been engineered, um, certainly between Martin Bormann 
and the Americans, where they actually said, let us go, we'll not bother you anymore. We'll give you Nazi scientists, the atomic bomb, landing on the moon, just let us go. Let us take some money with us and we'll be out of your hair. It is a possibility. There are many FBI documents um, now being circulated that actually do state that there is a possibility that Hitler survived. If Hitler did survive and was allowed to escape by the US government, then the Nazis have been planning this for months, moving funds and building secret communities in Argentina. It seems like a very logical assumption that Hitler would want to plan a Fourth Reich, that he wouldn't give up so easily, that he would formulate an escape plan and put the necessary procedures into action to create a Fourth Reich. And we actually have some recent documentation that's come to light that shows that there were meetings, there was an agenda to create financial backing to, to actually monetize this Fourth Reich. There are uh, areas of, of Argentina um, that, to be honest with you, you could refer to as Little Germany, with churches and, and uh, chalets built uh, in the same style. As, as, as they were in, in Bavaria. A lot of um, Germans, Nazis, um, emigrated to Argentina even before the war and in the early stages of the war. And I'm also sure that quite a few of them, like rats from a sinking ship, uh, left Germany when they realized that things were going wrong, over to Argentina with a view to starting the Fourth Reich. What they were doing was channeling money out of the country and building places in South America, in Argentina especially, uh, as bases to start again. And they'd had meetings with German businessmen and American businessmen and businessmen from all over the world to take over the world, but instead of militarily, they were going to do it through finance. And it was going to build their, this new Fourth Reich from Argentina. This was Martin Bormann's dream. And he had, had removed trillions of rush marks all over the place, and, and especially in, into Argentina. And, I mean, Argentina was, was, was pro-German, or anti-British, I should say. And what better place for everyone to go to, including the Fuhrer? William says that, according to his research, Hitler was essentially played by Martin Bormann and was left out of important meetings and discussions about the Fourth Reich. There's piece after piece after piece which says that he lived in Argentina post-war. What it seems happens is as soon as Martin Bormann arrives in 47, Bormann realizes that Hitler is no longer of any use to the new Germany. And he is left with um, his private doctor, who stays with him all the time, and his butler come Batman, come Factotum, um, Pablo Glocknik, uh, who looks like he's a Graf Spekrumen. And the meetings don't happen. But it wasn't just in Argentina where questions about Hitler's survival were being asked. Shortly after the war ended, a BBC journalist, Thomas Cadet, was allowed into Hitler's ruined bunker by Russian forces. Interestingly, this is what he said. Outside the front door of the shelter are the five perforated petrol tins that were believed to have been used for scattering petrol on the body of Hitler and of burning it. But there, at any rate, my Soviet friends found no trace of Hitler himself. But there was the half-burned body of a man with a lock of black hair on the right-hand side of his face and a little black moustache. And they looked at him more closely, and their doctors came to the conclusion that it was what they call a bad double of Hitler and not Hitler himself. If that is so, then all trace of him has disappeared. In the years immediately following the war, there was no proof that Hitler had in fact died. One of the problems that the investigators had was the complete lack of any physical evidence. The skull fragments that the Russians found near the bunker weren't even known to the West until 1968. And by the time they came round to doing any DNA testing on the bones, it was discovered that they did in fact belong to a woman. The most important thing in an investigation is, is the body, to some extent. Now, the BBC get invited into a bunker by the Russians and say, come and have a look, we, we, we've blown it up, there's, 
you know, there's nobody here now. And they go in, and there was literally nobody there. So when the Russians are asked to produce a body, they go, well, we haven't got one. We took it away. We've buried it somewhere else. Now, in the 70s, they uh, claimed that they dug it up and destroyed it and cremated it, uh, but they kept some skull fragments, which were then later tested and proved to be from a woman who was under 40 years old. So there's still no evidence of a dead body anywhere. There's no witnesses to that dead body. Hitler and Eva Braun's body were never found, and the fact that only a fragment of a jawbone was found leaves the door open that perhaps they would have formulated an escape plan. And wouldn't it be a smart thing to do, rather than suicide, if you could get away, wouldn't you go ahead and try to do that? If Hitler did escape, then he escaped without the, his jaw and his teeth, because these were found, and they were found to match Hitler's dental records. Um, and as a result, uh, to me, utterly compelling. So this idea that there's no physical evidence um, for Hitler's uh, body is, is pure junk. And of course, naturally, a conspiracist will say, well, they're not really Hitler's teeth, they're somebody else's. This is all confused, of course, with bits of skull fragment that were found near the body that have proven to be that of a woman and not Hitler. But the teeth, for me, it's utterly compelling. And, you know, having spoken to fellow historians about this, um, you know, the world's at one about this, but there are these sort of outliers who think that somehow they're not his. In fact, in the immediate aftermath of the war, British and US intelligence services received countless reports suggesting the former Nazi leader had been spotted alive and at large, giving people added ammunition to the claim that Hitler didn't die in the bunker. In September 1945, it was claimed that Hitler and his closest advisor and confidant, Martin Bormann, had boarded a luxury yacht in Hamburg and had sailed to a secret island off the coast of Schleswig-Holstein. And in December, the Americans were reliably informed that Hitler had boarded a submarine off the island of Mallorca, where he'd been living in a hotel with a group of nuclear scientists. There are numerous eyewitnesses' accounts of people, waiters, porters, all sorts of people, that say they have seen Hitler. Also, Eva Braun, his children, and even Blondie, his Alsatian dog. One of the Argentine generals, who's very grateful for the Nazis' help, says in the national newspaper, our friends from Germany are safe. Doesn't mention their names, but he says our friends from Germany are safe. Uh, there are reports back to the FBI that Hitler has been seen. Um, Hoover believes them um, and files them. There's a report which I've recently been given uh, to the head of naval intelligence in the US that the Vatican legate in Argentina has been told by a very believable source that Hitler is there um, and that the White House know. Um, one guy who contacted me, uh, Roberto Brun, was a waiter in um, a sort of private naval military uh, dining room in Buenos Aires in the 50s. And Roberto describes in some detail how Hitler and Eva Brown, on two occasions, he saw them there. You're looking like uh, you feel the power in him. Black hair with little touches of white, skin face. No moustache. I see the person, baggy eyes, and looking very tired. He look like me now. Difficult to work. Difficult. I feel the guy feeling depression. What's really intriguing is the eyewitnesses who say they saw Hitler, his wife, Eva Braun, and other German officers and Hitler and Eva Braun's children in Argentina, going out for dinner, going for a boat ride, just going about their normal life. And the accounts are really rather credible. There is so much nonsense about this story, and there are people in these countries who are happy to peddle that nonsense to credulous researchers. Uh, I wrote a book about how the Nazis escaped. I went to Paraguay to look at the theories behind Martin Bormann. And, you know, you turn up to a cemetery in Ita in Paraguay, and there's an old lady out the gate who'll say, Martin's tomb is that way, or she'll go, Martin's tomb is that way the next day. It's just a massive disinformation and, and, and fraudsters, essentially. As you would expect, the, these eyewitness accounts have been, been absolutely um, met with the Spanish Inquisition, if you will. The people and researchers have asked them, no, come on, are you sure that was Hitler? And they're like, no, no, absolutely, positively recognized it as him. And in one account, a woman from Germany who knew him before recognized him when he came into a hospital. And as she said, she just got the chills because there was no doubt in her mind that was Hitler. 
The notion that Hitler escaped from his Berlin bunker has held conspiracy theorists in thrall since the war ended. To most, such a story sounds like utter fantasy. But tens of thousands of Nazis escaped after the war, including the notorious Adolf Eichmann and Joseph Mengele. Is it not possible that Hitler also escaped with them? It would seem acceptable that you and I could leave Europe and start a new life in South America. Mm -hmm. Is it not inconceivable that the most familiar face on the planet could live out the rest of his life without being noticed or photographed or is, recorded in some way? Uh, Jamie, I quite, I quite agree with you. There are photographs, allegedly, of Adolf Hitler in Argentina and in Colombia. The CIA have one of him in Colombia. Um, I have one of him, allegedly, in Misiones province, in Obera. Um, there are FBI reports from what seems to be people at Hoover actually believes are telling the truth. Lots of FBI reports of Hitler's presence in Argentina post-war. You will see as you go through the newspapers and magazines of the day, there are constantly reports of Hitler being in Argentina and people saying, we have seen Hitler here, we have seen him there. Now, it's a bit like hiding in plain sight because the people they're hiding amongst, or the people who they visit and go and see, are oath-bound members of the Nazi party. Most of the eyewitnesses who say they saw Hitler were working for or working in places that were very Nazi-friendly. You've got hotels run by people who funded the Nazi party who were personal friends of Hitler and high-up Nazis. You've got farmland that uh, was owned by people who were Nazi sympathizers. So the witnesses are in the right place, if that makes sense. You know, they, If they're going to see him, that's where they're going to see him. And a lot of them didn't come forward till years later. They've got no financial gain by saying it. They're not trying to sell a book or a film or anything like that. There's no reason for them to say it. But there are so many witnesses in certain areas that say they saw it. Hitler and other Allied leaders always had an escape plan, multiple escape plans. That's a fact. So it's not implausible that even in the latter days of the war, he would have had still multiple escape plans to get out, to find another way to create the Fourth Reich. Why wouldn't that be part of his actual planning? Why would he commit suicide and just, you know, give up on everything that he had created? Gerard agreed to show me some of the evidence he's uncovered that he says proves Hitler did in fact escape. You can see here, Jamie, on, on the computer that the well, 1,300 documents I've brought to show you today out of thousands of documents that we've amassed in our research. Um, this one for me was one of the most important. This is Time magazine, Monday, the May the 28th, 1945, 70 years ago. And, you know, the lead line is a team of Soviet detectives conducted last week that if Adolf Hitler was dead, he'd not died in the ruins of the Reich Chancellery. And then it goes on in detail about the escape tunnel away from Hitler's private quarters. Um, so there would have been journalists at, at the... Yeah, at the BBC's at the Thomas Cadet is, is embedded, we call it now, with these people. Um, with the Russians yeah, going with the in. Russians right. going in to take the bunker. And, you know, it'll say things like... There's so much detail in this, isn't it? Completely. Under cross-examination, Germans who told of Hitler's death, twisted their stories, clashed in detail, finally admitted that no one had seen the Fuhrer die. Finally, the, told, told, the tale told by a member of Hitler's personal bodyguard catalyzed the conflicting stories. The bodyguard and SS Untergruppen Fuhrer last saw Hitler on April the 27th in his personal room in the Chancery. Yeah, you know, and... And, that, and that's in conflict with some of the eyewitness <laughs> reports at the time, isn't it? Well, no, it's in conflict with the eyewitness reports that come out later. Right, OK. And that's the thing. And what I've tried to do is, or what we have tried to do, is go through the contemporaneous reporting um, so that we can actually see what was being talked of at the time. And for me, it's not just one thing. I mean, you have Time magazine reporting what the Russians said, and then in 1947, you have Peter Baumgart, and it's just reported by the Associated Press out of Poland, that Captain Peter Baumgart, a 32-year-old former German Air Force pilot, told a district court Wednesday that he flew Adolf Hitler to Denmark shortly before the fall of Berlin. And then you have this detail. Was, so this is in court, this is, was, yeah. this was his testimony. The six-foot flyer claimed that Hitler was accompanied on the flight by German General R Roma, 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 Roma and his wife and a woman he believed was uh, Ava Brown. Well, there we go. How did you feel when you found this clipping? Um, well, I'd already read the Time report and the BBC report that there'd been no body found of Hitler in the bunker. And then we have a man saying that he flew them out. Uh, it's not a question of putting two and two together to make five. You suddenly have a whole series of events that are fitting in better than nobody, no eyewitnesses, people changing their stories and everything else. And then you get, you know, you get bound up, sentenced in Poland.
For a long time, the Russians believed that the Allies were sheltering Hitler, and they put about these fake stories as part of a disinformation campaign in an attempt to flush out what they thought to be the truth. In July 1945, the Russian commander, Marshal Georgi Zhukov, claimed that since Hitler's body had still not been found, he could have flown away at the very last moment. Even General Eisenhower, the former Allied Supreme Commander, appeared to be taken in. In 1952, he said, We've been unable to unearth one bit of tangible evidence of Hitler's death. Many people believed that he escaped from Berlin. The Russians were, at first, quite happy to accept that Hitler had died. But then there became very quickly emerging a narrative the, the Soviets were thinking, hang on a minute, do we really want to go around saying that Hitler's dead? Does it not suit our propaganda purposes to make it look as though Hitler's escaped and in some way may have uh, fallen into the arms of the Allies who are now sheltering him? Of course, there was massive distrust against the Soviets and the, and the, and the Western Allies. And so, as a result, there was a huge disinformation battle being played on both sides, largely and successfully by the Soviets, to spread um, uncertainty about whether Hitler had died or not. There's lots of discussion amongst world leaders at the time about what happened to Hitler. Most poignant is Truman asking Stalin, is Hitler dead? To which Stalin responds, no. If you want to find a single source uh, for this notion, farcical notion, that Hitler escaped, then it lies in the rubble of post-war Berlin, where out of which the, you know, the Cold War is starting to germinate. And it is the Russians who are putting it about that the Western Allies are helping Nazis, they're sheltering Nazis, and what bigger a name to shelter than Adolf Hitler? At the end of the war, former MI6 officer and historian Hugh Trevor Roper was commissioned to investigate Hitler's death. He spoke to many who were there in those final fateful hours, and all of them said exactly the same thing, that Hitler did kill himself, and the bodies of him and his wife, Eva Braun, were cremated with petrol. Williams, however, believes that those bodies were in fact lookalikes. It's not a huge leap in logic to think that a double went in for Eva Braun and for Hitler. It would have been a quite logical thing to do, in fact, and it would have been commonly done. In fact, Hitler used doubles before, so why wouldn't he use that as part of an escape plan? There are no eyewitnesses at all to the shooting or the um, taking of suicide. It was done in a closed room. Um, an adjutant supposedly found their bodies. Those bodies were then rolled in carpets or blankets. None of the faces were ever seen, and they were taken up into the Reich Chancery Garden, supposedly where they were covered in petrol, immolated, and burnt beyond recognition. Apart from the fact that it takes a crematorium 3,000 centigrade to burn a human body to bits, and you can't do it with petrol, as was proved with Magda and Joseph Goebbels, whose bodies were found burnt with petrol by the Russians in the Chancery Gardens but they were completely recognizable. It's very interesting that they didn't find remains of Hitler, but they ordered in 800 gallons of petrol. Can you just imagine what that amount of petrol poured on a body? Would I'm surprised it didn't set fire to the Reich Chancellery, to be honest with you, but I would imagine that that would just about obliterate. It, it, it's only like um, a cremation. I'm sure that there was literally nothing left. The bodies were taken by men like Otto Kuncher um, out of this uh, bunker into this small garden in the right chancery, where after a couple of inept attempts, they were eventually doused in petrol and they were set light to. Um, they more or less completely burnt, but when the Russians turned up, they found fragments of jawbone. These fragments of jawbone entirely match Hitler's dental records. So either someone was burnt in the right chancery with crowns and bridges in his mouth that are identical to Hitler's, or it was Hitler. I don't know which one you want to believe. Most historians balk at the idea of Hitler and Eva Braun escaping from the bunker. They say that they committed suicide in Berlin in the final days of the war, perhaps even the final hours. And many view Gerard Williams's version of events with extreme skepticism. I think it's absolute rubbish. Um, when I first came across this book a few years ago, um, you know, I, I dismissed it as being 2,000% junk. Um, I've now revised my opinion. It's 3,000% junk. 
I have no opinion as to whether Jared Williams believes his story or not. Uh, if he does, then I think he's a fool. Um, because the testimony and the evidence for Hitler's death is absolutely compelling. Um, and I don't really know why he would want to sell a book that flew in the face of what is well-researched, well-proven, credible history. We don't know it all, and we make this quite clear in the book. Parts of the escape route are scenario, parts of a complete fact. But they're the scenarios that work best with what is available to the Nazis at the time. They have U-boats available to them. We have reports from the Argentine police and the Argentine Coast Guards of U-boats being off Argentina at the time. Reports from the FBI of people being landed in Argentina at the time. So although it's impossible to say exactly that yes, they came on Group Seawolf on these U-boats, we know that the Americans said those U-boats were sunk, and we know they weren't sunk. We know that one of them turned up and surrendered at Mada Plata a month later. There are countless um, reports in FBI files, in um, uh, uh, British files, that will say that, oh, Hitler was a monk um, in, in, in Spain. Um, Hitler has been seen um, in the Canary Islands. Um, Hitler has been seen landing in a U-boat. Yawn, that old one. Um, Hitler has been seen in Greenland. I mean, they, they, these are all just nonsense. I think the, the naivety of an author to pick up an FBI file and treat it with reverence just because it's an FBI file is astonishing. There's always been a conflict between fiction writers and historians, and I, mean, I do both. So I'm, I'm very much aware of it in my own head, and uh, one's very tempting with fiction to overly historicise it and perhaps make it a little more warring, and it's always very tempting when you're writing history to kind of novelise it. So much of the history of the war, because it is shrouded in disinformation, fog, you know, the fact that people died and weren't around to tell us the full story, allows conspiracy and, and nonsense and drivel and junk to sort of propagate uh, and feed upon itself. If you look through the footnotes of a book like Great Wolf, I mean, you know, I look through them, and, it, and it's clear that he's building upon other junk. Um, so therefore you get this sort of validation, so utter, utter nonsense. If it's true that he actually went there, Hitler would never again set foot outside of Argentina. And though his dreams of a new Reich would never be fulfilled, he might at least have found some form of domestic happiness with Eva Braun, with whom he had two daughters. According to Williams' theory, after 17 years in hiding, one of the most evil men in history died on February the 13th, 1962, aged 73, in Argentina. I think the more you look into this, the more you do your own research, I think you survived. The silver bullet of nobody, that's not the important bit. It's the other evidence, the documents, the first-hand accounts in Germany, in Argentina, in the United States. Surprisingly, the possibility that Hitler lived and escaped is quite compelling. I think he definitely would have tried to escape. It would be a smart plan, wouldn't it? And it would go in line with the way he thought and, and planned out things. So it makes sense that he would try to escape. Hitler did not leave the bunker. He didn't leave it alive. He did not go to Argentina, except in the imaginations of people like Gerard Williams. And he certainly did not die at a grand old age. All we've done is gone back to the reporting from the time and put it out in a book. That book shows, I think, pretty conclusively, that Adolf Hitler did not die in the bunker in 1945. I think it also shows that we've been lied to extensively about the real end of World War II and how things happened after that. And I think that these things are as relevant today to us as they would have been in 1945. It is one of the great mysteries of the last century. What did happen to Adolf Hitler? Most historians agree that he killed himself at the end of the Second World War and his body was burnt to avoid any relics. But of course, without any remains, there is no conclusive proof. So, maybe he did plan and execute one final daring mission and escape to Argentina. I'll see you next time.